Good job. Well done. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oops. That's in this. Thank you. All right. Well, um, excellent. Excellent. Okay, so let's just wait uh, a couple more. One minute more. So let's say 8, 10. We blast off. Let's wait for more people to join us. Once you join in, please, let's meet you. Drop your name, your church, and your location in the chat. Let's meet you. Should you have anything to say in the course of the um, exposition, please just raise your hand. We'll pick you up from there at a convenient time to um, take the floor. <clears throat> We have a lot to learn tonight. Um, and uh, this is a topic all of us need to understand and uh, get a firm grip of so that we can transcend from our little corners, our churches, to the global stage. Okay. Yeah. Let's mute our mic. Mute your mic. Um, I think it's my admin's mic. Okay, if you're just joining, mm, drop a comment in the chat stating your name, your church, and where you're joining from. I see Brother Emmanuel Dominic. RCCG, Amazing Grace, Redemption Camp, or Redemption City, Moe. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Feel comfortable. Okay, guys. Without further ado, let us start. Like I said, we're going to start with an opening prayer. I will be leading us. Um... Oh, you know what? Let me select the first person that joined this. Mm. The first person that joined us was uh, brother. Brother Solomon. Okay, brother Solomon, could you please lead us in a thirty seconds uh prayer, just appreciating God for the platform and dedicating the old meeting to Him. Ask him for his guidance. Please, if you don't mind, Brother Solomon. Brother Solomon, are you here with us? It's not in there. It's not in there. That's all I was... It was a word I was saying. Brother Adura, can you please mute your mic? Thank you, thank you. Brother Solomon, can you hear me? If you can hear me, please unmute your mic. Okay. While we can't have Brother Solomon, Sister Amara, can you lead us in prayer? 30 seconds prayer. Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening, I love your energy. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, <laughs> Father Lord, we thank you for this amazing platform. We thank you for the meeting we're about to have. We ask for insight. We ask for wisdom. We ask for your direction. And we ask that you give us the grace to implement and the grace to understand and the grace to spread the gospel further to the ends of the earth. We thank you for the people who put this together. Father, we ask that you increase them and continue to increase their knowledge as they have decided to share freely with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this meeting. May your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you, sister. Bless Amen. you. Amen. All right. Okay. So by way of introduction, I know some of us know about this, but some of us are uh um we just joined the community so we don't even understand what is going on even though i think um we've done a 
a, 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 a job of, of um, putting it in our description on WhatsApp. If you check the description, you'll see something about what we do. We said we are committed to inspiring a new generation of church leaders who are skillful in deploying church tech needs. Yeah, and communications. How are we doing that? <laughs> Brother Ikena, you have introduced rain to my place too. It's about to rain heavily here. <laughs> okay, so uh, Brother Adura and myself, we met together in 2022. And uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we met together and we started the... Um, sorry, hold up. And we started the church media X. Can we all hear me? The rain. Yes, is here. we can hear you. Fantastic. Perfect. So, I said twenty twenty two. So that makes um by August or so this year, it makes two years that we have been on this journey. And look at what God has done. He's linked us up to about, I think we have about three hundred to five hundred churches in and out of the community. From just myself and him. Just believing God for a community that blesses church media professionals, that helps meet their needs, that helps solve their problems, that helps to inspire them. That part is also very important to us. Inspiration. We want to inspire you to do greater things. You know, there are some things you've done for five years, you've done for 10 years, God is saying you have you have taught this mountain long enough. Now turn to the left or to the right. So that's what we want to do tonight. Tonight is about opening your eyes to see what is obtainable, to see how other places, other churches, other empowered people are doing stuff so that you can learn from that and you can become like them. So if you um have been following the WhatsApp community, you would see that we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube. Uh, we've done a couple of bi-weekly forums. Go on YouTube, search for Church Media X. You're going to be blessed by those past series. We've done something on um social media. We've done something on structuring your team. We've done something on sound. A lot of things there. So I implore you to go to YouTube. Uh, we'll drop the link in the um in the community tonight. Go there, you would see materials, things that we've discussed that can help you in the journey. Now to tonight's uh, topic L. Don't forget what AVL is. A stands for audio, V stands for video, and L stands for light. Now those are what you have to deal with when it comes to media in your church. It's either audio issues, uh, video issues, or lighting issues. Now, tonight, we were able to get our dear brother. Um, is, I've known him for about... Five years, I think. Uh, what he knows and how he, I'm very proud of what he has done. And tonight, God is going to be using him to just lead us in some things. He's a seasoned professional, renowned for his expertise in designing. Understand that there is designing and there is integrating. So first, you have to design, then you integrate. We're going to be looking at all, all of those tonight. Um, so he does designing and integrating of audio, video, and lighting systems. Say Lord for churches and studios. So it's not just churches. He's worked with um, certain uh, organizations outside of the um, church. With a career spanning several years, Ikena has established himself as a trusted authority in the field, consistently delivering innovative solutions that elevate production capabilities and enhance audience experiences. Throughout his career, he has collaborated with various esteemed media companies, including prominent churches such as Avestas, 
uh, house on the work and numerous others. Um, is the managing partner at Red Box Consulting LLC. He leads a team of seasoned professionals in providing comprehensive consulting services. Um, his skills are not limited to this, but he is skilled in all of this. Uh, broadcast video equipment integration, broadcast video production, um, audio production, lighting slash visuals production, Ableton automation and time coding. So he's dedicated to helping churches, and I'm sure some of us have seen that on the platform where he's been taking on certain topics. He's dedicated to also helping studios achieve their production goals through innovative and tailored solutions. Anytime I speak to um, my brother here, I always feel his passion for excellence in, in media, people doing the right thing, people uh, following global standards. And that's why this topic I chose for him or we chose as a team for him is very apt. So without much further ado, let's have tonight and uh, with a, with a um, I want you to drop chats. You're welcome. Let's just welcome our brother, brother Ikena Lewis to the platform you're welcome you're welcome hi right, thank you thank you very much thank you all right can can you hear me well loud and clear okay okay all right okay hello everyone thank you to the church media x team for for this platform because i've always been a a you know um a demand supporter of, you know, having a good platform where churches just come together and, you know, learn and inspire each other in terms of things like production. And production is quite, you know, vast if you look at it. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Akwe, because uh, I, can, I can remember the first time I met you. I was just coming from the... Uh, I came during a conference and I came, I spoke to you at the gate. I told you I wanted to learn video because I yeah. was, I was doing, uh, uh, I just, I was doing lighting at that time, lighting and audio. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a way into video. And then you gave me that platform at house on the rock. I am super grateful for that because if You're I didn't welcome. have that, you know, foundation, I would not have been able to understand it well. And I can remember I told you that I was going to learn this so well that I'll be able to teach others. I don't know if yes, you did. Yeah. You did, you okay. did, you did. That's why I said I'm very proud of because I remember I saved your name as Ikena Rock Media Newbie. <laughs> you know what's interesting? <laughs> I've not changed your name. So it was recently I wanted to send it to somebody. I said, ah, this man is not a newbie anymore. <laughs> He's now a pro. So let me change your name. So I'm I'm very proud of what you've achieved in that short space of time. It shows your dedication, it shows your passion, and it shows that um this is something that God called you to do because we can all see how far you've come. Well done, my brother. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Now I would be I would be talking on audio, video, and lights and the integration. Uh, the best global practices understand best because like we are not doing anything that is not you know standard now there are some things that works without the best standard implemented but when it's not standard <laughs> understand this it's it's not going to be said here okay yes <laughs> now another thing there is a difference between producing a church service and broadcasting a church service. They are hmm. two different things. Now, hmm. for churches that produce their church, their, their, their church service, they, they have these things in play. Now, churches in Nigeria mostly, what we do is we broadcast our services hmm. and um 
there is a difference, right? Because when you're producing, everything is timed and everything is clocked to, you know, at this particular time, we are supposed to be on the wide cam because someone is meant to come on stage and we want everyone to be, you know, present at that time. We want a wider view at 12.15, you know, the jeep is meant mm-hmm. to pan round, right? Everything is scripted. Everything is scripted to time. That is mm. when you're having a church production. But mm. we broadcast our services. That means we turn on the cameras, you know, connection to switcher, switcher to vmix or whatever encoder you're using, and that's it. But now, when you're producing, a lot of things have to be in play. Now, I mm. would start with the, sorry. Um, okay, let's, let's go to the uh, table of contents. The, that's okay. the second slide after. Bradura, do you copy that? Oh, yes, please. Can you continue for a short while while it comes up? Okay. 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 No problem. So, uh, the table of contents is. I will first start with an introduction. Then I'll move to stage audio, house audio, broadcast audio, lighting, LED screens, video, and encoding and transmission, which is like the last stage of the whole process. Okay. Please, okay. can I just hold hold you a bit for for a brief moment? Let me ask. So basically. We all do broadcasting, or most of us do broadcasting, because some churches are yet to go online. And broadcasting means you've taken what you are doing inside your church and you are throwing it out to a wider audience, isn't it? Yes. Using different platforms. You can use um, social media. Uh, yeah. That's Instagram, Twitter. You can use in, um, YouTube. Or uh, you can what 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 else what other platforms? So I there are pick. other platforms like uh Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire Good. Stick TV. Yeah, Good. so there are other platforms um, that um the audio streaming, streaming platforms. platforms. Yeah, uh, um, Mixelar. Mixelar. Yeah, so those are the options you have for b- broadcasting, which is what most of us do, but we do not produce. When you say produce, that is. Um, most of our church services are still like, um, if I will use this term, uh, point and kill. So it's just point a camera at what the action, throw it online. So it's not ordered. It's not scripted. So what you're saying is best global practice is for you to script your production or script your service, which is now a production. Yes. Good. So I want people, I want us to understand it because um, some of us don't have background in production. We don't know what um, studio productions are. So basically, we can't even relate to when we say church service should be a production. Now, this is a big uh, movement from what used to be church. Before now, uh, let's say about maybe 10, 15 years ago, people just do the say what we're doing in Nigeria. They just point camera at the pastor, point camera at the stage and go yeah. online. But what it is right now is that people are taking their church services as production. And there is a reason. It's a big reason. It's, uh, it's, it's a major reason. So the major reason is that there are no churches that can take the number of people that are online so if your church has a capacity of 500 seats there is no time that you go online that you're not going to beat that number yeah so if your church is is in let's say lucky house on the rock is a 10,000 capacity church yeah i think uh harvesters is what maybe 5k no, no, they are they are um two thousand ish, two thousand. Good. So now, if you go online 
to check last Sunday broadcast. Now, understand the terms, broadcast, producing. Go online and check on YouTube and see how many people watched House on the Rock live stream. It's about 50K or so. Our weekly um, uh, count is about 50,000. Now, the reason you have to treat your service like a production is because you are attending to those people online. All the shows you watch on TV, they were produced. So why? The reason people now go the route of producing services is so that you can bring in the excellence that you have in those TV productions into church service so that it becomes um, um, good enough for broadcast. If you understand that concept, just drop drop a um, a one in the chat. Exactly. Drop one. If you don't understand, we will take it again uh, to just help you see that picture. Thank you, um, Brother Kena. You can go on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, the introduction, um, we... We are going to address audio, video, and lighting integrations, like in the global practices. This involves the equipment produced, the the equipment procedure, sorry. That's, oh, this is quite tiny. Okay. This involves the equipment procedure that must be put in place during integration. This should not be overlooked or skipped as they are integral to the alignment of each element of production. Now, can I, um, I will start with stage audio. Right. Um, can, can you move to stage audio? Yeah, stage, yeah, that's it. Okay, so first, the microphones that should be used, right, must be high grade with changeable capsules. Now, high grade, uh, Microphones starts with the the two name brands that we all know and love, which is Shaw and um, Sennheiser. Now, uh, Shaw has really really good microphones. Uh, the ULXD is fantastic, and you should know the ULXD has changeable capsules the capsule is the head of the microphone now you can change the, the capsule to another capsule you can attach another capsule on it it must be changeable it must be detachable and you must be able to attach another capsule on it a very good capsule is the SEV7 uh, by uh, I have forgotten the name but the, the, the name of the company that makes it but it's actually SEV7 it's what Elevation Church uses. Now, I would be using the example of Elevation Church in explaining a lot because... Elevation Church, Nigeria? Elevation Church in the US. Because US, in thank you. 2020, when I, started at, when I started at House on the Rock, um, the guys there, they put me in... Um, they like six of them they were all telling me like showing me this is this all online like everything all online they were all showing me how things are arranged how they should be done you know i think they were they were, they were putting they were pretty jealous at that time so <laughs> that was a very good opportunity that i was able to you know make yourself so they showed me a lot regarding audio the video systems and the lighting systems, how they are arranged and all. Now, now they, um, sorry, can you show the uh, the stage mixer, the, the picture of this stage audio? Hello, is it just me or, or your audio is more for the B? Can I you think hear me audio, it, I think his audio is uh, the okay, network good. Is, is fighting <laughs> on his own it's, end. The rain is yeah. much at his at his end. It's just starting oh. over here. Okay, oh, okay. okay. Let's let's wait here. for him. 
Good. Okay. Okay. Let's wait for him. I hope this rain does it. Um, keep us. Okay. So um, while we wait for him, um, like we were saying at the beginning, it's not for you to listen tonight and feel bad that oh, so we are so backward. We don't have. We don't have hope. No, that's not the aim of uh, tonight's session. You see, um, God told Abraham to look up at the sky. How many of us remember that scripture? Just look up at the sky. It can't. There's nothing in the sky that Abraham wants to do there, but it's going to give him a reference as to what God wants to do. That's why God said, look up at the skies. The same way you can't count the number of stars is the same way you won't be able to count the number of your descendants. And look at what Abraham's descendants are on earth right now. So it's the same thing we're doing tonight. We're saying, look up at the sky. Don't look down at your feet. Don't look down at the equipment in your church. Open your eyes and see the entire industry, how big it is. So then you will be able to appreciate what God wants to do in your life, what he is planning to do with your church. There is a lot more than what you are currently doing. You have two cameras. God wants to make it five. Whatever equipment you have, he wants you to have the best of it. So that's why we have this um, wonderful session tonight, just to open our eyes to see the promised land. Let's put it like that, to see what the promised land is and to um, begin to aspire to reach it. Uh, Brother Ikeda, can you hear me now? Are you good? Hello? I think he's even logged out. Okay, I'm sure he's struggling to join back. But let's, let's wait for him. Uh, does anybody have a question based on what has been said so far? Do we have a question? If you have a question, just raise your hand. Um, Brother Dura, can you do something for us? Can you please just run us through the entire slide, one after the other? I think we are on page three right now. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the table of contents. Introduction, stage audio, house audio, broadcast audio, lighting, LED screens, video encoding slash transmission fantastic let's move on next one okay intro i think you already read the intro to us let's go to the next slide me too though good are you back yes good, okay the program was running on the background okay okay you still uh hit yeah. your bits. Let's let's give it some time. Let's see how it goes. Okay, you can continue. We actually wanted to run through the entire slide to see what we have yeah, so in stock yeah, for tonight. So the the next one after the microphones, you know, should have changeable capsules is uh no no, we are still on stage audio. There should be flexible connection for the back line. Like um the pathway for the connection okay. for everything should be covered. Sorry. I wanted to do let, let's do an overview first. You know, because stage audio, what does stage audio mean? Let's look at what stage audio is. What's the difference between stage audio and house audio? Okay. What's the difference between house audio and broadcast audio? Because those are all part of your um overview in um can you go to the page before please or the page before that one that overview yeah so like you said stage audio what stage audio what house audio what's broadcast audio what are we looking at in lighting led screens video encoding and transmission so it's a summary for all of okay. us to have a bird okay. eye view okay Sorry, sometimes I'm just super technical about this thing, so I usually forget I have to make it. Okay, let me explain. Stage audio is 
audio for basically monitor, right? Is mon audio that's first generated from the stage and has to be monitored back on the stage. Hmm. Yes. Any audio that's generated on the stage, that stage audio, any any audio uh, channel that has to be monitored back on the stage, that's also stage audio. So yeah. stage audio is like a source and destination stage. Anything happening on the stage, drums, keyboard, guitar, yeah. electric guitar, you know, vocalists, any audio generated from the stage that has to be monitored back on the stage, that is stage audio. Pasta now, is also part of stage audio. Yes, pasta is very much part of stage audio. Now, house audio is audio for the room. This house is audio. any, yes, any audio source that is generated either on stage or somewhere else, like a playback, which is generated usually from like the video control room. So house audio is audio in the house, but it can be generated from any of the rooms. That's if they are doing a, like a, you know, um, like a separate production elsewhere. And it has to be monitored back in the house. Like they want to show it on the screens. That's or in the auditorium. Usual, yes, auditorium. Yes. Usually it's playback. Video playback on the screens is generated somewhere else. That's not in the room. But it comes to the house along with the pictures on the screen. So house uh, audio is basically audio for the house. Everyone in the room, what you're going to listen to, that's house audio. Now, broadcast audio is audio for online or TV or wherever you're taking where you're broadcasting to. Whatever destination you're broadcasting to, that is broadcast audio you're going to monitor it you're going to do you know the eq the compression the dynamics everything has to be done online or broadcast in that room now mm. the the next one is uh sorry you're not on the lighting now next, lighting is this room like the room color and room should I say temperature? Yes, room color, room temperature, that's lighting. Whatever colors appear in the room, that is lighting. Also, be aware, LED screens is also part of the lighting because it's attached to visuals. And yeah. whatever colors show on the screen is also part of it. It's also part of the visuals. It's also part of the color. It's also part of the temperature of the room. Color, yeah. temperature. Anything that generates color and temperature is part of lighting and visuals. Now, okay, so um, sorry, please. When you say temperature, it's not heat. No, it's temperature not heat. is color band yes. where we're going from cool to hot. When you go going from blue to um red, I think. Yeah. The yes. rainbow because it's measured in Kelvin. Yes, yes, but yes. it's not temperature, not, it's not the heat. Not Fahrenheit or Celsius, yes, not that kind yeah. of temperature. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, um, video. Now, video is... Uh, video is first the camera uh, capturing the moment. Then... The destination of the video, like the IMAG, that's image magnification that you have in church, like your LED screens or your projectors, whatever's showing you the video on your screen, mm -hmm. that is a video destination. So mm -hmm. there is source of the camera. The camera is like the source and the capture device is the camera. Now, the destination is the projection or the image magnification you have in your auditorium. Mm -hmm. Now, encoding and transmission, that is final destination for online or TV. Now, 
um, there are two destinations now for video. It's either it's encoded and transmitted to satellites or wherever you're transmitting to, or it is showing live in the room mm -hmm. as a destination. So two destinations, room and encoding. Yeah. So I think those those also inform the reason for us to have two different mixes. Yes, I guess during I production. Address that. Yes, it's part of this. Good. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay, so I have read about stage audio. Uh, I just want to read out the second part, the second point here. The flexible flexible connection part for uh for um the back line, that is the drums, the keyboard, the bass, guitar. Everything must be like your cables must not be scattered around. There is no there is no dirty stage, no dirty it because uh, cable parts makes things look clustered easily. So in order to avoid that, and especially on stage, you don't want someone tripping over cable. If someone trips yeah. over a cable, the person will fall and they will transmit it online and then they will start the meme of your church. They will use your church as a meme. Uh -huh. Yes, so to mm -hmm. avoid that, there must be a flexible and proper connection for the back line, especially the drums. Uh -huh. Yes, you must arrange uh -huh. it properly. Tie it together, make it look neat. And there is these foldable covers they use for, um, they use for cables. It must go underneath something like that. So someone knows that there is a cable running through here and then you must be careful. And there must be like safety tips on the on your stage. Wherever you have cables, you must, you know, put a sign there, you know, don't trip, you know, something like that. Yes. So that's also another safety precaution people use on, you know, when you have cables running in different parts. Now, Good. any instruments connected to connected via TRS. That's the quarter inch connection. Now, any instrument connected via TRS must go to a DI box. If you notice, drums use a microphone and microphones are uh, XLR direct. But mm -hmm. if you're going through TRS, it must go to a stage box. Sorry, to a DI box rather. <laughs> it can be either active or passive where you get to use, either you get to use um, phantom power in it. Now, it must go through a DI box. And oh. um, yes, so things like your bass guitar, that's TRS, your um, keyboard, that's TRS, electric guitar, TRS, whatever goes through with TRS has to basically, but that's not like there is a super technical explanation to that. But oh. this is just me being, you know, we can't basic capture about it it. tonight. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is me being basic about it. So the next one. Okay, so every member of the back line must have in ear monitoring. I am still I'm still on stage audio. Every member of the back line should have in ear monitoring. That means every member, everyone playing drums, everyone on keyboard, talking drum, whatever you have, but your back line must have in-ear monitoring. In-ear monitoring, yes. Yes. So it's usually um, RF or cable, but if you want to get it done well, use RF. That's radio frequency. Oh. That's It's wireless. Oh. Yeah. Now, every member of the back line should have a talkback microphone. That is standard practice for everyone who's a member of the back line. Your drummer must have a talkback mic. Your keyboardist must have a talkback mic. Your bassist, they must all be able to communicate with each other because there's this thing they do where they do six, two, three, four, dun, dun, one, two. Dun, dun. So when they're trying, they, they communicate with each other. You know, to have that. Now, let me start with this now because I'll keep saying it. To have an efficient production, there must be a proper line of communication. Now, this is where it starts from. On the stage, your back line, they must all be able to talk to each other. 
and they must all be able to talk to each other and talk to the audio monitor, like the, the stage audio engineer. That's the monitor oh, engineer. Your, your line so is great. Tell... Oops. Okay. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. We can hear you. You're loud and clear. Okay. Okay. So every member of the, uh, every member of the. Can you hear me now? Yes. I okay. So every member of the back line should have a talk back microphone for efficient communication so they can be able to talk to each other first and they can be able to communicate efficiently with the stage audio engineer so they can tell the engineer when they are having issues and communicate that efficiently okay so there should be our RF antennas on the stage that would carry both um so the microphones to microphones to um the microphones to the receiver antenna, the IAM pack to the transmitter antenna. So you should have both antennas for your transmitters and your receivers. That's for your microphones and for your um, in-ear monitoring. There must be antennas. And there is this software uh, from Shaw. It's called the uh, Workbench. So Workbench monitors, you know, signal strengths of both the of both the yeah, monitoring transmitter and the uh, microphone receiver. So, if you have that software, you can be able to monitor signal strengths, battery levels, all of that. Yeah. So, let's go to this other point. So every worship leader and vocalist must have inner monitoring. They must have that ability to monitor audio. They must have in-ear monitors. That's must. That's a must. Because there are times the producer or the music director wants to talk to, you know, someone singing or someone backing up, you know. That's also an additional uh an additional feature to it. But majorly, they must be able to hear themselves clearly. They must be able to hear the back line that as the instrumentalist, they must be able to hear them clearly too. And they must be able to hear the music director because the music director communicates to whoever's singing, you know, at all times. Yeah. Plus, there is this thing. Um, so... Another reason they, they need to hear themselves is uh, click track. So there is this metronome that plays. Everyone is hearing that metronome. So no one goes off beat. Yes. So that is like, an uh, like the main feature of using in-ear monitoring for both vocalist and backline. That's the instr instrumentalist and the singers. They hear a click track that is a metronome. So they know how many beats per minute is the song, and no one is going off beats. Okay, so there must be an audio mix console on stage. I know there are there are ways to go around this that the vocalist and the band they mix for themselves, but that's not standard practice. That can be done. But that is not standard practice. And there must be an engineer present. Yes. On the console, there must be an engineer present. Um, sorry, Adira, can you show the, the picture of the monitor engineer? Thank you. No, no, no. This is no. This is broadcast audio. This is front of house. Yes, yes. Okay. So 
first of all, you can see stock back mic very present, very much there. Um, there is an engineer present. The location of the engineer at the back of the stage. Now there is a picture. Um, let me find out the name. Um, sorry, one minute. Um, okay, audio equipment area. Adira, please, can you show the audio equipment area, the picture? Yeah, no, 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 you passed it. You passed it. Yes, this is it. Okay, so here you can see to the look at the rack. like the rack um, now in this rack to the left you have the in-ear monitors that's the transmitters and then the microphone receivers you have them there and in the middle you have the patch bay where you have the stage box and all and then towards the right you have the MADI setup where they do um where they do the routing the Uh, digital routing of the of the audio signals from the stage. Now that's it about stage audio. So if you have any questions or um if um Mr. Apple wants to come in now, because that's it for stage audio. Miss Adria, can we go ahead with house audio? I don't think I don't think Mr. Apa is here. All right, I'm doing that now. The, the the presentation the presentation not the not the picture i was waiting to see if mr Alpe has a report out about this but i think we'll just go ahead with our audio Oh, yes. Okay, Here next slide. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So the first point which I want to make very well known is a very big point, but I have seen this mistake in, in, in like a lot of churches where they where they rig their line array. Now line array is like your major speakers in the house. Right. So the first point, the line array and lighting fixtures should never be on the same truss. Now, the reason for this is you have left, you have right, left and right. If you rig them on the same truss, the laws of physics will come into play where you have vibration moving from left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. 
And once there is vibration moving left to right, right to left, there will be um, the vibration also affects the uh, the speakers. Now, when your speakers are vibrating, whatever sound you're going to hear from it, it's not exactly the sound that you're expecting. Yes, so you're going to have vibrations moving left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. Your line arrays should not be rigged on the same truss as your lighting fixtures, please. Because I know sometimes it's much more easier to just put one truss and put the two line array. No, that's not, it's not even healthy for the speakers themselves, right? It's better you rig it from like a, get a hoist, you know, get a hoist that would, from the, uh, from your steel bars, I don't know, most churches are tents that they use steel bars, but if it's a church building, make sure that the hoist of line array left and right are different. Now, the second point, the power line to the line array and the subwoofers should be calculated on the flow diagram. Now, you must know how much power is going to your line array. That's if it's active, but if it's passive, you must know how much power is going to the uh, amps. Now, you must know how much power is going there. It must be properly calculated on the flow diagram. You must know what is how much power is going here and there. So at the end of the day, if you're doing your like your power distribution, you can know point A and point B. Whenever you have a power failure or there is surge, you would know what went where, right? Your power calculation must be done for your line array systems. You do not bypass this in the in global best, you know, standard practice. You do not. Now, every audio cable must be labeled and put on a spreadsheet. Every of your XLRs, your TRS, fiber cables, whatever you're using to get audio, cuts, uh, cut five, you know, whatever cables you're using, your cables must be labeled. And then you put the label, the, the, you put the source and destination on a spreadsheet, global standard practice, remember. Now, the PA system must be simulated before integration. That means you must do like a simulation of the PA systems how it will sound in the room, haptics, acoustics. You must understand how the PA would act in the room before you integrate it. You must simulate it on a software. There are different softwares that do this. Simulating it is very important so that you know how many boxes are needed, uh, how many you know boxes are needed to you know cover the room fully. There must be a simulation. Okay, so okay, so after integration, the PA systems must be tuned to the acoustics of the room. After installing a line array, you must you must tune it to the acoustics of the room. Now, um, this would create a better atmosphere where the line array can, you know, properly and efficiently give out the best that it is supposed to, right? To the accommodation of the room. If you don't tune it to the accommodation of the room, it's just going to sound, you know, it's going to sound, yes, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be, it's not going to sound fine-tuned to the room. Now, when you do that, when you integrate, when you bring in, uh, line array systems, you must tune it. They are way there. There's the there's the an acoustics and DMB and Martin Audio. They have softwares that do that. You know, Maya also yes, they have software that that tune it to the acoustics of the room. Which you know, you have someone who you know your integrators be able to have good ears and then tune the boxes to the room. Okay. So there must always be a system engineer. 
presence to control the pH levels. Now, when you're in a room, house audio, the line array, the levels of the line array, it's not meant to be controlled by the you know, front of house engineer. What the job of the systems engineer is to, you know, monitor the red, the green, and the yellow parts of the of the PA system, so that the so that the mixing engineer doesn't get you know doesn't get too uh, trigger happy and just you know dial up the volume so loud. The job of the systems engineer is to monitor the systems and make sure that the boxes are giving peak audio to the room at as as at what's needed at that time. It must be like, uh, so it's worship. The levels allowed is maybe 90 decibels, 80 decibels. So the controlling of the, the controlling of the, the um, you know, the volume of the, of the line array systems must be done by the systems engineer. That's why you need a systems engineer so that the, the mix engineer can just do the work and then the systems engineer monitors the audio from the line array and then monitors the levels and makes sure that the mix engineer doesn't blow up one of the boxes. Simple as that. Now, uh, Waves Extreme Server is, you know, is always used to manage plugins. You know, some uh, most of the churches they use they use Waves, you know, to make the audio better because live plugins sure makes uh, audio sound better. And if you're looking for like the peak level of audio, you must be using plugins, active plugins on. The channels, the bosses, you know, however you tune it to. Now, there must be a top back mic at all positions. The front of house engineer must be able to communicate with the monitor engineer, that's the stage engineer. The front of house engineer must also be able to communicate with the broadcast audio engineer because sometimes they change. Um, they change, you know, channels. Like the stage engineer can change keyboard from channel one to channel two. And the monitor engineer must be able to communicate that effectively to other engineers that there has been, they're like, we've had an issue on this channel. We have to switch to uh, the second channel. So there must be effective communication amongst all engineers of stage audio, front of house engineer, systems engineer and the broadcast audio engineer. I'm mm -hmm. going to say this again, for, an, for a production to be effective, there must be a proper line of communication amongst everyone. This is another point to it. Now, can you show like the picture of the front of house console? Front of house console. Yes, the, the other one to the, yes, this is it, yeah. Okay, so uh, you can be able to zoom in if you can. So this is an SD10, yeah, this is an SD10. SD so on this, on the left, you have uh, Waves Extreme Server, on the right, you have Waves Extreme Server, and as you can see, like uh, this picture is not complete. There is a system engineer that is right beside the. There's a system engineer that is right beside the uh, front of house engineer, right? That is monitoring the levels of the acoustics boxes. So this is Elevation Church. They use acoustics boxes here. So to the left, to the to the left of this picture, you have the Waves Extreme Server. You can see the picture showing up. Then to the right, you have the the plugin levels, and then you have the um, the an acoustic software monitor software for the systems engineer. So, do you have any questions, 
Mr. Apple, if you have any rebuttal for this, I said something about uh, stage audio. I don't know if you heard it. So if you have any rebuttal, because I would move to broadcast audio if there's... Hello, Mr. Apple. Okay, are you saying you want a picture of the stage audio? No, 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 no. I am asking you if you have a rebuttal or any question to ask regarding both Questions. stage audio and house audio. Good. Good. Okay, so I want I want anyone that has a question to drop it in the comments section. I'm sure this is going over some people's heads. Pay just uh bear with it. Um I you know I have an experience with media that I can share with you. There was a time I just joined us on the rock and they had a meeting towards the experience. And I can tell you, I didn't understand what they were saying, man. They were talking about all manner of things. That year, I didn't get it. But I paid attention. And by the next year, I blew everybody away by the level of things I understood. So it's the same thing for some of us tonight. You probably don't get it. You don't see the details. But I want you to see the big picture. Um, listen to the... Um, little details of communication, of documentation. Those are important things. You don't have to have the best equipment to do best global practices. You just have to pay attention to those small, small things. How do you run your cable? Do you just leave cables everywhere on the stage so that somebody can trip and fall? Those are best global practices that is highlighting there, even though we have a lot of technical jargons right in there. I want you to pay attention to all of those things. Um, we don't have too much of time. We're already past nine. So I want you to just run through the remaining things and we can now do a um, Q&A at the end. So let's quickly go through so that we cover all of it. Okay, okay, all right, no problem. So we go Thanks. to broadcast audio. Now, <clears throat> next, slide, next slide, please. Yeah, so the broadcast audio the broadcast audio room must be acoustically treated. There must be present acoustics in the room. Think of it like a studio room where you monitor audio for studio. That's for the consumption of, excuse me, that's for the consumption of people outside the room. So to effectively monitor the audio while mixing, there must be acoustics in the room to treat the room. Waves Extreme Server. Again, Waves Extreme Server has to be used here because it makes the audio better. Whatever makes the audio better is always advised, is always implemented. A multi-viewer and a program, you know, multi-viewer and program must be on two separate screens. Now, on one screen, you have a multi-viewer where you have all the cameras in the room. On one screen, on the other, there must be like a the the program audio. That's the broadcast program audio should be on that screen. Uh, sorry, the broadcast program uh program video rather. <laughs> the broadcast or the broadcast program video. Don't twist that. The broadcast program video and the broadcast program uh broadcast multi viewer must be on two separate screens to the broadcast audio engineer. I'll take it again. Yeah, so you can see what, you can see the, um, he, he has a bird eye view of all the eyes. That's the cameras that are on site. In the room. Then yes. you can see which one in particular is um, live. Going live. Yes. 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 All right. Okay. So audio routing systems like Dante Ravina and Madi must be utilized because you are dealing with multiple audio connections. So there must be routing involved. That would, um, there must be routing involved that would, you know, allow for efficient audio passing from one place to another. Now, analog audio ends at the stage. Anything apart from the stage goes digital audio so it must be in a routing system like ravina dante or madi because comms is also patched into it now 
for you to be able to efficiently move audio through different, you know, different consoles, you must have a routing system in play. And these routing systems would allow for efficient movement of digital audio. Analog audio ends at the stage. Once it enters the stage box, it becomes digital. Its movement from the stage box elsewhere is going to be digital audio. So it's better and is more efficient in a production setting where you need to have a routing systems to allow you patch the audio digitally. Now, a loudness control system must be utilized in the broadcast audio room. So uh, TC Electronic Clarity M is a very good device to monitor, you know, loud for loudness control. Um, there is this one from Dante. Yeah, there's a plugin from Dante that you can use to monitor loudness but you must be able to monitor the loud so you don't blow up people's ears because some people are listening to you in their cars. People are listening to you in their, uh, with their airports. You do not want to blast it and tear someone's eardrums off. Yes. So that's it for broadcast audio. Um, if you can show the picture of the broadcast audio room. So I could explain. Uh, Okay, uh, Mr. Adura, please, can you show the picture of the broadcast audio? Well, Adura, are you there? Oh, yes, I'm on it. Can you hear yes. us? The picture of the, the broadcast audio, okay. please. Okay. Um, if that's going to take some time, should we, uh, move, should we move on to, to the next lighting. slide? So we'll come back to it. Yeah. Uh, have you seen it? No, no, no. It's not up yet. No, it's not Broadcast up. audio room, the picture, not the presentation. Hmm. Hence, the gospel or the good news is described with certain well defined objects. The good news is this. Okay, this is broadcast audio slide. We want the broadcast audio room picture. Can you please put that on the screen? Do you see me? Secure? Yes, that, that's it. Yes. So you can see uh, <clears throat> if you zoom into this picture, you'll be able to see that there is uh, like there is acoustic, like the room is acoustic. No, well, not, not. Yeah, yeah. You can see the acoustic treatment on the like in the room. You can see if you zoom in, you're going to see it. So right here, because this is console A, you can see the multi-viewer and to his left, to his right, there is a screen that shows the um, program, the program video. Like what's showing in front of him is, cause this is like his own preference. So he's yeah. looking at the multi-viewer, but to his right, there is another screen that shows program video. Now this is uh this hmm. is the digital SD5. As you can see, there is waves to on the right side. 
on the right side was pictured as waves. And do you see that little box right there? There's a little box. Yes, that's it. That's a TC electronic clarity M is for loudness control. So he's monitoring the loudness because like this position doesn't have a system engineer on like front of house where there is a system engineer that monitors loudness. Here he monitors the loudness and you know implements waves in in his audio setup. Now, okay, let's move to the lighting. Let's move to lighting. The lighting slide. Okay, so the first point is motorized trust management must be utilized. That is, your trust must be able to come down and go up without, you know, stress like chains. No, you have to use a hoist, a hoist system. You have to use a hoist system that is motorized. Your trust must be able to come down and go up without anyone, you know, dragging chains. Uh, because what we have in most churches is um, permanent permanent trussing at the yes. on the roof where yeah. they have to set up scaffolds or use ladders yes. to reach to touch anything yeah. lighting yes yeah okay so so second point all the fixtures must be arranged according to their universe so in light in the lighting world um, there is a you have to do arrangements by universe. So sometimes you have five universes on your fixture list. You have fixtures, maybe you have 20 fixtures on one universe, then the other 20 should be on the other one. You know, your LED, your globals, they must be on, you must be arranged in the same universe so that they can be able to talk to each other, so they can be able to, you know, so that you can have, um, because I will touch on this next, you can be able to um, do a hard reboot. So if you want to do a hard reboot on any of the fixtures, it must be on the same universe, unless you would touch, you would touch the wrong thing and, you know, you know, spoil something. If you're not, if, if the program is live, you can do that. You can do a hard reboot, you can do a hard reset of a fixture. That's if it's on the same universe. Okay. Well-known brand fixtures are what's advised to be installed because like, uh, let me, like Chauvet, Ruby, Clay, Clay Parky, and uh, ADJ, that's American DJ. Now, the reason is these brands, they have, they have um, good shelf life. And you can be able to go into the firmware of the fixtures. Now, if a fixture is having an issue on the same universe, you can go on the firmware, you can log in and go on the firmware of the fixture and make necessary, you know, improvements to it. That's if there is an issue, it's not getting valid DMX, you're trying to change things, you can log into the firmware and get it done. But China fixtures are not going to give you that because they are universal fixtures. They are universal fixtures. You can't do that on China fixtures. If it spoils, you have to go up there and you know do it manually. But if it's any of these fixtures that they are more expensive, but you get to, you know, you get the 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 reliability part from it, and the operability. Um, yes, because another thing with uh, Chinese products is they don't have a second, uh, second hard value life. So yes, that's the shelf life. Yeah, 
Yeah, so when you buy original Ruby and um, Chauve and Clipaki, you can still um, resell to other people because the shelf life is about, sometimes it's 20 years. Yes, 20, so, exactly. Yes, yeah, sometimes 20 years. So in the space of maybe you've used it for 10 years, you can sell. But Chinese brands, I bet you, you shouldn't do more than five. In between zero and five, it will it will lose half of its uh, intensity, and it, it, in the remaining part, you'll be struggling with uh, uh, what's it called power issues and all of those things. So it's best to go for original lighting fixtures. Yeah. Okay, so the next one: all connections must end in a network connection, which is the appnets. Appnets is like the most used network connection. Now, the reason is for efficient communication with the lighting fixtures. It must yeah. end in appnets. So, um, however, you're getting DMX to the fixture mm. because the signal flow of lighting is different from audio. Because in audio, the microphone is the source. The console is the intermediary point, and the linary system is the destination. But in lighting, DMX is generated from the lighting console, and then it ends on the fixtures. Is the other way around in lighting. DMX starts from the starts from the console, the lighting console, and ends at the fixtures. Right. So uh, the connection was ending up nets. So you, you can have efficient communication with the lighting fixtures. OK, so house ambience. Oh, sorry, whose mic is on? Maybe they can fix that later. House ambience, uh, the ambience lights must be included in the setup. Now, if you're having house lights, your house lights are different from house ambience lights. It's what gives the house warmth and a bit of temperature. Again, Kelvin, not Celsius or Fahrenheit. It gives the room temperature and then color. Every lighting fixture must be connected to a dimmer rack. That's for the house lights. Now your house lights must be connected to a dimmer rack. Whatever light you're using, you can connect it to a dimmer, a dimmer rack. So what the work of the dimmer rack does is it can get, a dimmer rack would get valid DMX. So you can control the intensity of your lights, in-house lights from your lighting console. This is a very good, you know, trick to having proper lighting in a room. So when it's time for worship, you trigger the worship session and then the lights go, the house lights go from intensity 100 to 50 or 20 or thereabouts. Okay, so to do a proper lighting setup now, you must have the front lights, which can be a spotlight, but it's usually called front lights, key lights, and wash lights. You must have these three in your setup. The front light is usually like the Chauvet, um, Gobos, you know, you have them pointing at the particular spots on the on the on the on the stage. Then you have uh spotlights, which is usually like the um Lico's, you know, those lights that are, are usually yellow, those are your front lights. Then the wash lights are like the lights that give color, like the LED lights. So you must have those three in the setup. At you must have front lights before your before you have your uh spots, right? Sorry, before you have your key lights, front lights, key lights, and um wash lights. So front light, chauvet fixtures, key lights, leakles, 
and the light that emits um, a yellow, a yellowish look. So let me just put it that way because liquids might be. So you have front key lights and your um, wash lights, your LED lights, front lights or spotlights because they point at a spot on stage. Then you have key lights that lights, you know, that gives the, the color, the, the yellowish color to your stage. And you have your LED, LED lights that give, you know, the temperature, the color and temperature to your stage. Now, okay, so like your source fours. Those are key lights. Uh, they are key lights. Great. Okay, yes. so uh, there's a suggestion that I want us to take. I think we still okay. have about two or three more slides, right? Yeah. And we're already so deep into the um night. And um so we're looking at us doing a um part two of this um, Wow, okay. Very wonderful session. Yeah, so that people can ask some questions tonight. I already have a question in the chat that I think you should uh, quickly look at. We should okay. uh, plan to wrap up in about 10 minutes so that we can have a part two, which I think we would be able to iron out more things. Okay, okay. so it says, is a grandmaster clock required for real-time audio-visual networking architecture with regards to interoperability between the various audio protocols mentioned on that broadcast audio? Yes. Grandmaster clock. Yes, okay. so it's in it's actually in the video slide because mm. from it's yes it's in the video slide but maybe we don't touch it now so let me just explain now when you're doing mm. like you're doing both audio uh digital audio that's madi ravina dante and you're doing um analog audio mm. all every console must have valid clock it, there must be a master clock that you know clocks every console in the room, in the room and in the in like the the facility, the church or the TV studio, wherever. There must be a master clock because these things have to work in sync. You don't want any, you don't want any out of sync, uh, any out of sync, um console because that would cost like a you know it would cost some distraction excuse me it would cost some distraction so you don't you don't there must be a master clock so far you're running audio uh, analog audio and you're running digital audio there must be a master clock and if you see like all these sophisticated the sophisticated uh, consoles they have time code inputs but elevation church run time of day the run time of day system so the time of day is converted to like it's converted to um it's converted to time code right so every system is synced to time of day so if there is any issue they can point out at the particular time there was a you know breakdown or there is anything but everything every audio console gets valid time code which is time of day also the lighting console also gets that same time code too because there's a receptacle on the on the time con uh, on the lighting console that gets time code so everything is synced up also remember that you're multi-tracking you're recording multi-track so the so logic pro x or pro tools accepts time code so you can also attach that multi-track to the time code so that everything is synced up. Yeah. Um, is Mr. Questy here? Oh, he left. Oh, wow. He's probably having the talk issues. Okay. Let me stand by.
Mr. Adira, do I go? Do I finish up the lighting slide? Sorry, what is that, please? Do I finish up the lighting slide? So we know we are done with lighting. Then when Mr. Ape comes in, we can continue the questions. Oh, okay. For questions, um, anyone who has um, a question can unmute their mic and please ask. Anyone? Okay, I think he's back. Anyone? Does anyone has a have a question? Um. Yeah, we've answered the question about the um the grand the master grand master clock. clock. Yes. Yeah. So any other question? Okay, then you can continue with the lighting while we um yeah. If you can help me out with the the lighting slide. Let me just conclude that. No, okay, I think, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can we all hear me? I can yes, hear please, you. we can hear you. Okay, okay. So, like I said, let's let's try to wrap up in about five minutes so that uh, people can have people can yeah. have um yeah, I would let me just let me finish up with the lighting okay. slides, then we hold there. Okay, so the next point is the lighting console must have at least two screens. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so the lighting console must have at least two screens, which is standard practice from like Grand MA, um, Grand MA2. Not the full size, the size before the full size, but it's Grand MA2. From Grand MA2 up upwards, there is they have uh, they have two screens, so you can monitor both color, temperature, and then the other screen you handle movements and like and you handle you you monitor movements and macros. So whatever lighting macros you have, you have it displayed on the other screen, and then on the first screen you have your color arrangements for the fixtures. Now the power to each the power to each fixture must be calculated before you know before integrating before installation. The reason is you must know how much power is going to any any and every of your fixtures. So when there is a surge you know You know what went where at you know at each time, but it must be calculated before doing that so that power doesn't spoil or cause a malfunction on the fixtures. These high brand fixtures they have they are power sensitive because they are like ADJ is an American brand, uh, Clay Paki is Italian. I'm not sure of Shobe and Ruby. Chauvet and Ruby, I'm not sure about them, but they are they are they are power sensitive. So you need to have proper calculation from your distro, from your power distro, your power light, your lighting power distro. You must have it properly calculated of what and how much volts is going to each and every of the fixtures. Okay, so there must be like proper communication system with the lighting console. There must be a communication system like Clearcoms, RTS, but the person who's lighting must have comms. 
now you cannot handle any you cannot have any proper you know production without effective communication the person who's lighting must also be on comms it is standard practice globally yeah so every lighting fixture must be labeled on the cable and the, the cable must be labeled rather and put on a spreadsheet of the source the destination the universe and then the dmx number now, there must be a 3D rendering of the lighting design before integration. This is because you want to, you need to know, you know, how much light will go. This is like a simulation where you know how much, how much, uh, you know, how the lighting intensity needed here. Your pastor is a bit dark. You want to know how to properly light your pastor. You need to have that simulation of how many fixtures should be in different positions so you know how well to, uh, how much, you know, how much, how many fixtures you need in different positions. You know how much Rubey fixtures you need here for your front or spotlights. You know how many, you need to know how many leakos or your source fours. You need to know how many you, on them like, that you're going to have as your key lights. You need to know how many LED fixtures they're going to have is your wash lights so you need to know you know this th these three different things and how your room would react to lighting and also for your house lights um, audience and and ambience lights you need to know how your audience are going to look with the lighting fixtures you want to implement now lastly there must be a hard reboot show file on a drive ready to be yeah ready to be used now that's because lighting fixtures usually act, they usually act up that's why you have like a like a macro on your drive that's ready to re reboot now the reason I, I am saying this because i am because of my experience with lighting sometimes they act up one fixture is dancing when pastor is preaching you need to have a show file on a drive that can do a hard reboot on that particular fixture. And if you don't have like the proper connection, you're never going to be able to do that. You need to climb up there or find, go to the fixture and get it done manually. But if you have the proper connection to communicate at net and DMX to the fixtures, you can remotely handle that situation. And that's it for lighting. So, Mr. that you can take over. All right. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Thank you so, so much. That was quite uh, an eye-opening expository. And um, you're talking details right here. So, um, I, I think some of us have questions. We probably don't know how to frame them. Uh, if you want to come up, I can unmute you, grant you the floor. Just ask one or two questions, then we will call it a night. Is anybody willing to do that? Um, we've talked about front of house, we've talked about stage um, and broadcast audio. We've talked about um, lighting. So let's have any questions or oh, we're all good. If we're all good, just drop a... I'm good or lot, drop it to drop it to in the chat. Let me know so that is um on record that we all heard well. Thank you, Mr. Kina, for sharing so much. Yeah. Okay. I've been educated in foreign transform. God bless you, sir. God bless you, my brother. That's the kind of feedback we want. Thanks for sharing. Okay, great. Great. So what we will do. There's still a lot to talk about and there is no time. Like as usual, there is usually no time. So there's time in the future. So we'll use that time in the future. We'll do uh, a part two, which would be covering, let me see, we'll be covering LED screens. That There's a lot to talk about on the LED screens and video. Then we'll look at um, encoding and transmission. And this is one part you don't want to miss. They are very, very key to uh, 
um, the current level most of us are in our churches. Um, so it's good to let's leave that for part two. Um, thank you so much, Brother Ikena. You've really, really, really done excellently well tonight. And uh, I want to say thank you to my brother, Brother Dura Amigba. He's multitasking right now. He's in another meeting while he's also helping us with tech in this meeting. Then I want to thank my brother who uh, gave us the platform for free, the Zoom platform. Thank you so much, Brother Damilare. And um, finally, I want to thank my brother, Brother Eri, for the beautiful designs that you've been seeing on the posters. Um, for us to know how much of work was put into this, all these slides were prepared by our industry guest. He took his time to put them all together so that we have a very clear understanding of what he's bringing to the table. And it's one of the... Um, good things about him he's a very detailed person so i said that to say this don't miss next um i don't think it should be this coming monday coming monday is um uh, easter monday uh we'll be having some productions so it's going to be the monday after so we'll have enough time to prepare and to enjoy it so at this point, I want to bring up one person to give us a closing prayer. We started with um, an opening prayer like Jesus did. So we'll take a closing prayer. Brother Tunde Jimo, I'm sorry. I'm just saying your heart raised. Um, do you still want to ask a question or you just lead us in our closing prayer? I I wanted to ask a question, just a quick one. Okay. Um, the interaction of um, the RF signals, uh, most mm -hmm. of our equipment use um, RF signals, the, the microphones, the lighting system, the video cameras. I don't know, how do you, sometimes you, what can be done so that this, um, these signals do, do, do not interfere with themselves and give you a bad production? Okay. Your cameras use RF signals. That's your wireless. Is that what you mean? Yes. And yes. your lighting. Your yes. light which which of your lights use RF signals? Do you have wireless lights? I'm assuming that most um, DMX controller uses uh, RF signals. The mm, wireless okay. transmitters use RF signals, microphones and all of that. So sometimes deaf. Okay, okay. Let me allow him answer then. Uh did you hear the question? Hmm. Yeah, loud and clear. Good. <laughs> so uh in order not to have interference between I'm not sure about lighting. I think I don't I'm not sure about lighting having uh radio frequency yeah. but i think uh, like from my own experience what i do is if you call me to come you know check your facility or building um if you want to um not have uh interference between two rf signals i'm supposed to come in then scan the room for different available rf signals sometimes MTN, you know, MTN has, MTN bought a lot of RF signals, especially in Lagos here. So you need to know the, um, so a scan needs to be done in your facility of which RF signals are available, which RF signals aren't available. So you need to do, you know, a scan and then make sure that every, your microphones, the RF signal on it is logged in on a spreadsheet. So you have it going at, you know, it in, so you have it uh, recorded of the, the, the gigahertz or the, that you have the gigahertz, you have it, you have the microphones on, you need, you need it recorded on like a spreadsheet. 
this is the available radio frequencies. This, 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 this. The microphone A is on this. Microphone B is on this. Microphone C is on this. Your, uh, your video. That's the one for like uh, wireless cameras. You have it scanned, so you know your the available like the available radio frequencies for audio and video. You have it on a spreadsheet. So it, it must be scanned first and then put on a spreadsheet so you know what is carrying, in which radio frequency is carrying, you know, the microphone, the camera, stuff like that. It must be scanned. Yeah, I think uh, there are softwares that you can use to scan your room for yes. those kind of uh, frequencies. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there are softwares you can use to link frequencies or, I mean, to yes. sort frequencies so that you know um, this band is for this equipment, this band is for that equipment. So it's yes, important to do that proper yeah. um, assessment of the frequencies in your location. You know, um, at House on the Rock, we usually would do a scan before experience of all our equipment because sometimes these things, they change and you start having issues over time. So we'll do that scan so that by the time we move equipment to the experience ground, at the experience ground, you're going to do another set of scan to know what has been yeah. done and all of that so that you can patch things properly. And sometimes yeah. you can't be too careful. There will still be some crazy frequencies coming from somewhere that you didn't see earlier. Maybe the device was turned off they turned it on at some point. So those are the ways to resolve those kind of issues. Anyways, all right. So I want to quickly bring the meeting to a close. Are we good, brother Jimo? Is it possible? Yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. I had a comment. Yeah. Uh, you know what we can do? We can talk more about this in the part two. Let's... um um call it a night before some people will sleep off on the <laughs> on the meeting. <laughs> so please let's uh, um, bear with us on not being able to trash it like you would want. So let me call on Deborah Tundeji Mo. Can you please just give us a final prayer for the night? Help us thank God and then um, commit the next one into his hands. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I just thank you for tonight. Thank you for the knowledge of uh, knowledge that we received. Thank you for Church Media X. Thank you for this community. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for leadership. And thank you for all our various churches and um, the Church Media Ministry. Father, we ask that you help us to translate all of this knowledge into our work in our various churches in Jesus' name. And as Amen. we commit the next meetings that we have, we ask Lord for wisdom and for grace for Amen. the next meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your house of prayers in Jesus' mighty Thank name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. All right, thank you, our guests, for doing a wonderful job. God bless you real good. And thank you to everyone that showed up tonight. Next one is going to be even greater. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, and God bless you. Good night, sir. Good night, Rabasi. Good night.